My name is Professor Wayne Cox and um, I am a specialist in international relations and Middle Eastern politics as well as the international political economy. I've been working on a multi-year project. I'm writing a book that looks at the formation of uh, new states in the international system. Uh, the case study that I'm looking at is the Kurds of northern Iraq. Uh, and this is a really exciting project for me because this is where I started my research. That's what I did my dissertation on. I looked at the Kurdish question and I've been working on this book for about three years now. Uh, in the preliminary stages, uh, I did some research presentations at Carleton University that are on YouTube. Uh, and since then, I've gotten into more of the nuts and bolts on it. It answers some of the big questions in international relations, like where do states come from? Why do some states succeed and other states fail? I have been doing a lot of work on actually the pedagogy and the teaching of international relations. Uh, and I'm working on a book chapter right now that actually looks at what has happened to the lecture uh, in the kind of era of remote teaching and the pandemic? Uh, and what ways can the lecture be reinvigorated as a teaching tool at the university level? And the third project uh, that I'm working on uh, revisits something that I started earlier in my career, which was uh, a lot of work on critical theories in international relations. Um, and uh, I'm looking at the turn towards social constructivism within largely the American discipline and the ways in which it has sort of transmuted what used to be critical theory. The Kurdish research is really, was inspired initially, the reason why I did my dissertation on it and the reason why I am so happy to revisit it is one of the most under-researched nation groups in the world. Um, and it has been um, made infinitely, infinitely more complex by the fact that the Kurds reside in four states where they have been repressed, uh, Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Turkey. Uh, and given the implosion of Syria and the refugee crisis in recent years, I think the time is now to, to really kind of put that research agenda back to the, the top of my priority list. I incorporate graduate students in my work in a lot of different ways. Um, um, right now, I am the field convener for international relations, so it's sort of my responsibility to help the incoming PhD students get themselves through their coursework and through their field exams, uh, which means I know all of them. Um, I know all of them very well by the end of that process. Um, and the master's students um, also, many of them take this field course. So I, I have the luxury of knowing most of the graduate students who are in international relations. I'll start with my colleagues. Um, we have always had in the Department of Political Studies a really good collegial group. And in recent years, we sadly have lost some of our, our senior colleagues to retirement. Um, although I think they are happily retired and they're doing lots of interesting things. Uh, the good side of that is that we've got a lot of young junior colleagues. Um, and I'm happy to report uh, that they continue with the collegiality. So I love working with my colleagues, uh, first and foremost. Secondly, I, I love working with the students. Queens is different than other places because it is in a university town. And so you can't help but run into your students when you go grocery shopping or when you walk around town. And you get a real feel of the sense of community that's here. And that community is even more specific within the political studies students. Uh, we have the Queens Model Parliament. We have Model United Nations. They know each other. They like each other. They feed off one another. Uh, and that just makes it so much easier for me to teach them. Uh, over the years, um, I've always taken the opportunity to have public debates with my colleagues. I'm kind of famous for having debates with Kim Richard Nossel, who recently retired. Um, and it, sometimes it's a bit of theater. Kim will take a conservative stance and I will take a not so conservative stance. Um, but the students love it. Uh, certainly when asked by associations like Middle East associations here in Canada to give public talks, I always take the opportunity, um, both because it's gratifying to, you know, get criticism and exposure to your research, but you also learn from it. You meet people, uh, people with interesting stories and interesting um, takes on, on the issues that you're discussing. So um, community outreach, in at least as far as I'm concerned, is almost as important as just quite simply getting the research done. Um, it, once it's done, it needs to be exposed to as wide an audience as possible. It's good for you, the scholar, and I think it's good for the general public. <laughs>